Well, good morning. Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them, it's good to see you in God's house today. We are glad that you are here. It is good to see you. It's good to have Pastor Austin and Julia back in, in service with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, he got back yesterday evening, and he got a hold of me and said, what do you need me to do? And I said, I need you to come and just get refreshed. You've been through a lot, so come and get refreshed and be blessed and just be here this morning. So we're glad they're here. A um, couple announcements that we have for you. Uh, we need to let you know that staff appreciation is next Sunday. We're going to be appreciating all the staff uh, that, that is in support of, of what we do and helps us to do things here. And so uh, if you want to get a card, we've got one, two, three, four staff members that you can get. Uh, we're going to recognize um, uh, Pastor Austin and Julia as their youth pastors. We're going to re recognize uh, Pastor Cynthia as our children's pastor. Uh, we're going to recognize Denise as our, our treasurer. And we're going to recognize our praise and worship leader, Sister Gina. I know she's the pastor's wife, but she's also, she fills a lots of hats. So we're going to be recognizing her as well. And so if you want to get them a card, uh, the church is going to be giving, giving them something and just letting them know how much they are. But we want to recognize our staff because, listen, without them, it doesn't go forward. I appreciate them, and we need to show our appreciation to them. Also, August 9th is a tentative opening for Kids Church. Everybody say, yay! yay. Amen. We're tentatively, uh, that's our desire to open. We're making plans to open and keep them safe and, and do social distancing back there. We've got a plan in place. Um, you know, we had a couple of different ideas. One was we were going to attach a ring of, of those pool noodles to every kid to where they couldn't get close. I think we scrapped that one. Um, but we, we've thought about hula hoops and maybe those old swimming pools and they each get their spot and they have their own stuff. And so uh, Sister Cynthia, Pastor Cynthia and her team are really working hard to maintain social distancing back there when we go back to that. So please remember that. Um, our elders meeting August the 11th at 7. And then women, there's a Texas Women's Conference. Usually that's in April but due to the, the pandemic that we've been going through, they weren't able to do that. It's usually in Weatherford um, at the campground, our Church of God State campground. It's not going to be there, but they're going to do a Facebook Live one night only. You can tune in. I think they're, they're, there's talk about maybe having a watch party, maybe doing it in here or uh, groups getting together. I'm not sure how that we're going to do that, but um, you do need to, to uh, get together and watch that. I think you'll be blessed. And uh, I touched, Sister Jean has got a record. She's going to be doing a five-minute presentation for it. But she's now serving on the state women's board. And so uh, they've asked her to do some things with that. So those are the announcements. They're in your bulletin. And uh, speaking of your bulletin, attached on the back of your bulletin is a prayer card. And if you'll take that sometime between now and after praise and worship, uh, if you'll write your prayer request on that and bring it up at that time, um, when P Elder Chip comes, and uh, just we we'll pray over that for the next seven days. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Prayer changes things. And if you'll write that down, we don't share that with anybody. We just, uh, we have people who take them after service. And if you like to pray, we encourage you to go back to the Welcome Center at the end of service and grab a card and pray over that. It's real, it's real easy. Um, sometimes I'll get one, sometimes there's not enough, and I don't get one by the time I get back there. But last week I had one, not this past week. but And I just put it in my truck, because I'm in my truck two or three times a day. And I set it right there where um, I put my phone, and when I get in, I call out that name, and I pray over that individual probably three or four, five, six times a day. It's real simple. Just put it in a place. Uh, in the past, I've just put it in my pocket. Anytime I reached in my pocket, and I felt that prayer card. Just called out that name and asked for God to touch that individual and minister to that person. So remember your prayer cards. Also, on your bulletin, if you got a bulletin, or back at the Welcome Center, if you're a guest, we want to know you're here. Now, we have hard copies of our guest cards. If you prefer to do it that way, the praise team will be coming down after praise and worship. And if you need one, just you can let them know. Or you can uh, take a picture of that QR code here. Or at the Welcome Center, there's a, a, a sheet back there. You can just use your smartphone, and, and that takes you to a place where you can fill out your information, and we have a gift for you after service for being a guest here. And we are so glad that you're here. Now turn to somebody and say, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Now some of you didn't really get into that. You really need to get it. Say it again to somebody else. 
Maybe you didn't like that person. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you will, stand with me. Uh, actually, I'm not standing, but I'm going to ask you to stand. And I want to read from Psalm 66. When I was a kid growing up, we used to sing. Uh, when I attended Assemblies of God, we had a, our, the color of our hymnal book was blue. But when you opened the, the cover in the inside and the, and the back, it had Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise or shout to the Lord all the earth. Now, I want to read some more, but right now, can we just do what the Bible says? Can you, now, you just act like you're at a, a, a baseball game or a football game, or maybe you're a, a, a you know, a, a monster trucker, I don't know. Whatever floats your boat and makes you shout, not angry, but in joy. You just get that. I'll tell you what, get a picture of God on the throne, amen, and Jesus Christ seated at his right hand. And can you just make a shout of joy right now to the Father? Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Make a joyful shout to God. All the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. And make his praise glorious. Listen, verse 3. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. Can you say that to the Lord right now? God, your enemies are going to submit, have submitted to you because of the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. Verse number four says, all the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name, Selah. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. God, for your loving kindness is better than life. Lord, we just lift up to you right now our praise and our worship, and we magnify your holy name because you alone, God, are worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus. is the name of it is let it rise and I challenge you this morning to let the praises of the Lord rise in this place this morning let him rise in your life let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of the King rise among us let it rise Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs. 
Can you find the word where it says try? Try to praise, try to worship, try to be healed, try to be saved. Now the word in the scripture is let. If you research the word, go through it and you'll find it's true. It doesn't say try. So when we say I'm trying, I'm trying, no, that's not, it won't work. Because we can never try hard enough because we will fail. We need to just let what's inside come out. We just need to let what's inside come out. So if Jesus is in, Jesus inside of you, he's abiding in you, we need to let him well up this morning and let him come forth. And we just need to let those praises rise this morning. There are all kinds of things that will hinder you this morning. COVID-19, the thought of that, worries of that, anxiousness of that, struggles that just come about because even getting out of the car and walking in the grocery store now is difficult. Everything is difficult. And it's easy to get your mind and your eyes set on those things. And that will try to squash your praise. It will try to squash the fruit of the Spirit in your life. But God is calling us, He's challenging us to rise up. To rise up and be who you are in Christ Jesus. To let the praises of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, concern me because that is what the scripture says and our trust is in your word it's in you Jesus let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from glory is my song let the
to us, that you are not letting us go, Father God. I thank you, Jesus.
Seated on his throne, he was clothed in glory and exalted high, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The angels.
are holy, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. We continue to lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. Oh, so holy. Thank you, Lord. If you have any prayer requests, cards, please bring them forward now if you haven't already. Our God is holy, set apart, none like him, none who can compare to you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. So wonderful you are. If you would stretch your hands towards these requests, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so awesome. I love you this morning, Lord. None like you, none who can compare to you, Father. You are, your arms are not too short that you can't handle any of these requests, Lord. You are amazing. For you have already answered these. The answer is already there in your word, Father, and we're believing you for the answer. We're believing you for healing, restoration, guidance, direction, provision. Lord, you are all in all, so you are our answer in every situation. So we're joining ourselves with these requests in agreement, Father. You said if two of us agree about anything we ask, it will be done. So we're receiving that and believing that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then remember, these are going to be in the back. Please take one and pray for them each day during the week. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you just give the Lord a wave offering? He is worthy. Amen. Lord, we just bless you and we praise you. Hallelujah. As our praise team is going down, if you need one of those uh, guest cards, if you'll just get their attention, they will be glad to get you one. Um, it is, again, so good to have you in service with us. And we're glad you chose to worship uh, here at Walnut Creek Church this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to worship God in your giving uh, of the tithe and offering. Uh, I want to welcome those who are watching live via Facebook, and I want to encourage you to con continue to worship God in your giving, even online. You can go to wccmansfield.org, click on the Take Action button, and you can give tithe and offering in that way. And those of you who are here, we uh, want you to uh, just begin to come and those of you on this side, if you'll stay over here, and those of you over here, if you'll come and worship the Lord of your tithes and offering this morning, appreciate your faithfulness in giving to the Lord in all you do.
those of you who can, I'm going to ask you to stand and stretch your hands this way as uh, Elder Bill comes and gathers the tithe and the offering and brings it before the Lord. We're going to just pray over it, uh, His Word. The Bible says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse and see that I might open a w the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. And so if you just stretch your hands this way, we're going to just ask the Lord's blessing and speak the word of God. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, as we have brought to your house today that which you have placed in our hand, and we have given the tithe and the offering and blessed your name, God, out of obedience and out of love to you, Father. Lord, we just speak your word of blessing over it. God, your word is given, it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom, Father. Lord, we thank you, God, that we have to give. Lord, we worship you in our giving, and we pray, Father, you would multiply it to reach around the world with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said, amen, amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, and you will open them to the book of John, chapter 14, um, we are continuing on the Jesus life. And we, we talked about the first two Sundays, what is the Jesus life? Last Sunday, we talked about um, the, the, the four initial steps, or the first of the, the initial steps. There are four initial steps to the Jesus life, and we talked about the first one last week was to follow. And uh, we, we spoke of how that's not, doesn't begin, it begins at your conversion, but that's not the first step. Your first step is to get up from that altar and to move in a lifestyle uh, that is uh, according to the Word of God, according to Jesus. And so we're going to look at step number two. Um, the Jesus life, initial steps of the Jesus life, number two. And I'll turn to somebody and say, obey. Obey. That's, it's real simple. Obey. Now, I want you to understand, you know, you can teach a dog to obey. Some dogs. I won't tell you, I won't share, a, a, you know, Gene and I bought a house in South Texas. We bought the house that had this beautiful English Springer Spaniel in the backyard. And they said, they just really sadly, just they put it, they were the best actors I ever met personally. They put on this sad face and said, we're going to have to get rid of our dog because we're going to an apartment. We have no place. And I said, and it was a registered English Springer Spaniel. I said, I'd always wanted one. It's a beautiful dog. I said, we'll take it, won't we, Gina? And she was like, uh, uh, uh. It was an insane dog that would not obey. I won't get into the details of it. We finally pawned it off on somebody else. They tried to give it back. I said, nope, finders, keepers, takers, weepers. He's yours. Um, that dog would not obey. You couldn't, you couldn't threaten him. You couldn't punish him. You couldn't be good to him. He would not obey. So... Is true, but you can teach an animal tricks of obedience. We are not we are not animals in the sense of we're not just to be trained. Now, please hear this for the way it is. We're not just supposed to train ourselves to be obedient because it it, it doesn't last. And we're going to look at that right now. If you'll turn John chapter fourteen and verse fifteen. Now, very uh, a familiar passage of scripture here in John fourteen. Um, in the beginning, and, and, and Jesus is toward the end of his ministry, he's really trying to prepare his disciples for his leaving. And he, he, he tells them that, look, don't be afraid, don't worry, I'm going to leave, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. I know that's verse 1. That's how he starts off this, this communication with his disciples in this particular chapter. Verse 15, he says this, in, in this part of the, the discourse, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, that's very straightforward and simple. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orph orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. 
At that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, everybody say keeps them, okay? It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, for your loving kindness. We pray that you would give us understanding and illumination to open our hearts and our ears to hear what you are speaking to us today through the Holy Spirit and through your word. I pray that the words that come forth, God, would only be that which you would have me to say. And Lord, that the ears of the hearers, both here and who are listening live stream, who are listening podcast father lord that they would hear what you are speaking to their heart in this moment in this season of their life we ask these things in the name of jesus christ our lord and savior and the church said amen amen so how do we obey jesus how do we obey jesus and i like what gina said earlier she said nowhere in the bible does it say try scriptures do not say try to be a christian you just are you just be you just let things take place not in that we are not in that we are uh waves in the wind but but we are individuals who are seeking and walking after jesus christ i'll talk about that a little bit more so if we're going to talk about obeying jesus very simply jesus puts it in john 14 verse 15 he says if you love me Keep my commandments. Now, everybody say, keep his commandments. Okay? So that's very simple on the surface. Keep his commandments. But most of us can't keep rules. Not all of them. You could keep 99% of them, but if you break one, you have broken the rules. Okay? We, we find it hard to keep our laws our ordinances of local, state, and federal federal guidelines, governments. Rules and laws that we can see, that we can hear, that we can touch. They're tangible to us as we deal with them from our physical presence here in this present world. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. But how many of you, this past week, if you were driving somewhere, if you went one mile over the posted speed limit, you are a lawbreaker. I'll make it even better for those of you that don't have a heavy foot. There's a minimum speed on many roads. And if you are not meeting that minimum, you're breaking the rules. You're breaking the laws. Have you ever just come up to a stop sign in the middle of nowhere and there's no one there and there's no traffic and you haven't seen a car in days and you just kind of slow and go? Okay, if you didn't stop, S-T-O-P, you broke the law. Now, we're laughing and it's, you know, we're, we understand, but the truth is, if you're going to keep the law, you have to keep the entire law. Or you're a lawbreaker now here's here's what just really gets my goat if i if i were to have a goat okay you see we live in a world of rule makers and rule breakers but a lot of times many times the very rule makers break the laws that they make because so many times the rule makers intend the law for everybody else except them that's not the way the law works you know in our society unfortunately 
the law is not fair. Not because of the law itself, but because of people who are enforcing the law, trying to maintain the law. If you've got enough money or influence, you can outrun the law. Or skirt the law. Or get around the law. Okay? We're talking about keeping the commandments of Jesus. Much like the Old Testament and the laws of Moses, we want to keep the law. We need to keep the law, yet we wind up failing over and over, and we wind up frustrated with our inability to keep or obey. Religious people in the day of Jesus, they were the scribe, we call them scribes and Pharisees. They were the keepers of the Mosaic law. They were also the enforcers of the Mosaic and temple law. In fact, if, you were, if we were living in the day of of Jesus and you were in uh, error of one of the laws of Moses they were the ones who would enforce it not the Romans the Romans didn't care oh, they only cared about their law but the Pharisees and the Sadducees and in other words and Jesus addressed this he said you know you you have an ox that goes in the ditch on the Sabbath and you'll get him out but then you condemn somebody for carrying a thimble full of water on the Sabbath day saying it's work they criticized Jesus and tried to trap him because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Said it was against the law of Moses. Now at one point, it's really going to get good, Matthew 5 and 20. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said this, Except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you're not going to see the kingdom of God kingdom of heaven now that's pretty that's pretty scary and difficult to them because to them in that moment in that day they were the religious leaders they were the ones who were keeping the law they were the ones who were enforcing the law they were the ones who were everyone was supposed to look up to in uh, this keeping of the mosaic law that was given to moses on sinai and they've been following for thousands of years and here comes jesus and says you know what if you want to see heaven, if you want to see my Father, if you want to know what you really need to do, he broke it down into really small increments. Because, you know, we, we digest things better in small increments. Spiritually, physically. He said, if you, if you want to know what the law is, let me tell you what the law is. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself. Everything else, the law, the prophets, it hangs on these two. Okay? So Jesus has given us some insight right there. Now, in John 14, verse 15, he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. You see, even, even everything the religious leaders were doing in the day of Jesus they were not, it was not enough. So how could you and I keep or obey his commandments? Point number one, that was all leading up to this. Obedience is a heart issue. Obedience is a heart issue, not an action issue. What I mean is this, what I mean to say is this. Is you, you, actions have to follow who we are and what we are, but the truth is it's got to stem from the heart. If we're going to be obedient, you know, uh, as a child, I remember growing up as a child and my parents setting rules. And a house without rules is chaos, so there, I'm not against rules. A house with a, without order is chaos, and order comes from defining what the rules are. You can go this far, but if you go beyond that, you're breaking the rules, and there will be consequences because we have to teach them as young children that there are consequences in life. If we don't, they'll just go willy-lilly off and do anything they want to and wind up in jail or dead. And so we, there has to be rules, and there has to be order, and God, the Bible says that God is a God of order. And my parents had rules growing up. And I won't get into all the rules that they had and whether or not I agreed with them. Let me just say that growing up, when I was at home or when I was around them, I obeyed them. But there were times when I, when I was out of eyesight and earshot that I didn't. Now, don't look at me with your religious attitude 
because we've all been there. And I found moments where no one was watching that I did what I wanted to do, and it was outside the rules. And there were times when I got away with it. There were other times when I didn't. Because someone ratted me out. (laughs) That's what happens when you live in a small community. Someone's always watching. There's someone always that knows what you're doing. You see, we, we, we forget that I may be alone in my house. I may be watching or, or doing something that I shouldn't be doing according to what God has laid out, but no one else sees it. You know what? God sees everything we do. In secret, in private, He knows it all. So we're not hiding anything from our Heavenly Father. Obedience is a heart issue. It's not an action issue. Uh, meaning this it, you can keep the actions and still not be right in your heart he said if you love me keep my commandments in verse 15 that word keep now now i want to talk to you just for a minute in in the in the greek that word keep means to guard from loss or injury to keep an eye upon or to attend to carefully everybody say attend to carefully Anybody have a garden in here this year? Anybody have a guy got one, one, one person with a garden? Anybody ever had a garden? Yeah, okay. You know, there's something about a garden. You can till up the ground, and you can furrow out those rows, and you can plant that seed, and you can water it, and life will spring forth. But amid the life, there's some other life that springs forth that maybe you didn't plant. Maybe you didn't desire. Now, I was, earlier in the summer, I was planning on doing some raised bed gardening, and this whole thing happened, and so I didn't get it done. But we have a side yard. We live on a a corner, and we have a side yard. It was there before we got there. The previous owners had had planted, and there's some mature uh, uh, shrubs and plants in that side yard. But uh, I planted a thing or two, and Georgina and I have planted things. I really like it, and it's open to everybody because it's outside of our backyard fence and so we usually we call it our our texas uh uh, flower bed it's it we try to plant things that are native to texas but i i had planted something two years ago that i have that i bought in 98 somebody do the math how many years is that 22 years 20 21, 22 years ago, I purchased two plants. They were hybrid hibiscus. I planted them in my house down in Victoria, and when we moved from there, I dug them up because I really liked them, and I gave one to my dad, and I gave one to my father-in-law. Because in being in the ministry, we move, and I really liked them, and they had been down and seen them, so I just gave them to them. Now, if you were to go to my, my mom and dad's uh, uh, homestead in powderly texas you'll see one of those plants still growing not been taken care of in about two years but it's still growing and you can plant it in the ground because it's hybrid and the frost doesn't kill it it'll come back every year and it flowers about june and the 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 flowers are about this big around they're size of a plate beautiful deep red burgundy and i just have always loved those plants so they're not young plants and my father-in-law when we moved back to texas he he had rooted a cutting from that and given me that plant and he said here i want to give you a part of your plant back and so we had planted it in that side garden talking about keeping and it started coming up around may you know i i I love to make sure that there's plenty of mulch and weeds are down and everything's good but june the third i had an issue arise and i haven't been able to do any house or the yard work not housework that either i enjoy yard work i enjoy cutting my grass and edging my yard and keeping the bushes down i enjoy trimming the trees and pruning things and making sure it looks good and i take 
pride in that and and it's an enjoyable thing even in the heat i really in, i do you can ask Gina. i really enjoy making sure those things i haven't been able to do it since june the third now my neighbor across the street he's a young man he he'll come over and just mow my yard and weed eat it and, and he does a great job and i'm appreciative of it but it, it you know the flower beds aren't being taken care of and i'm certainly not going to ask him to do it and so gina got out and took care of the front but the side yard is Let's just say it's become overgrown. Because we've been unable, I've been unable, and she's been taking care of me and the housework. She can't go out and do that too. And the weeds have come up. And I noticed the other day that it, it, it's choked out that plant. In fact, that plant is dead. And the weeds are getting taller than the ornamental bushes that are there. The word keep here means to tend and to guard from something that will invade and choke out life. And you see, if we're going to keep the commandments of the Lord... First and foremost, we must maintain, we must maintain the ground of our heart. That's why the, the Bible cautions about roots of bitterness getting caught up in our heart, taking root. The Bible tells us we're to be rooted and grounded in the Word. You see, the reason that we struggle, I believe, and I submit to you so much with keeping or obeying the commandments, the words of Christ, are not because we don't have a desire to keep His law, not because we, but we, we find ourselves failing to tend, to guard keep his commandments or his word we have to attend it we have to guard it from loss something that we do with the heart but not our feelings i will say that again you can't keep his commandments with your feelings because your feelings are fickle and they will lead you astray if you're governed by how you feel instead of your faith you'll be praising him one minute and devouring someone in the next we have to walk according to our faith in jesus christ understanding what he has said attend to it keep it very carefully It takes action. I told you it's a heart issue, not an action issue. It takes action to keep it. And action isn't works. It's simply moving on something we know to be true. Point number two. We need help. Because many of you are sitting there saying, well, I don't know if I can do this. Well, I know I can't do this. I've had years of not being able to, to do this or, I, or failing. Have you ever failed at living for Jesus? You ever failed at the Jesus life? I have. Yeah. I failed at it. See, God doesn't look at things the same way we do. And so I really want to stress that. We need to focus on seeing how God sees. He knew we needed help. And Jesus followed if you love me, keep my commandments with the Father, verse 16. The Father's going to send a helper, a comforter. He's going to abide with you forever. He's a spirit of truth. You know him because he dwells with you, but he will be in you. And we know what he was talking about, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This word helper, we, we know what it means. It's parakletos. It, it, it means an intercessor, a counselor, an advocate. It's someone who is summoned to, to one side, summoned to one side. One of the words used is someone to succor you know what that word succor means it's a nautical term 
I had a, a, a man, we went to, the, uh, we went to a, a missions trip on, in the Bahamas, and he talked about getting on one of those old uh, sailing vessels, these, those old ships that were wooden that they, in the 14th, 15th century, they sailed from Europe over to the new, uh, they had one there, and he got on, it was a Dutch ship, and there was a Dutch captain, and they taught young people how to sail the old world style. And they, they, they did all kinds of sailing, and so he was talking to them about, about the, the ship and different things and he was asking about the mass and he said well you understand he said that was a tall mass he told him he asked him how how tall it was and and he told him how tall it was and he said well how do you get that to stand firm and he said well first of all you're looking at what you see but a part of the length of what i told you goes down to the very bottom of this ship because there has to be enough down to support what's going up and then he, he made mention of the ropes that were coiled on the sides. And he said, those ropes, particularly, those ropes are there so that we can put them in a storm in rough seas. They were meant to go under the ship, pulled tight, lashed, to, because when the waves would beat some of that wood, it would start to separate it, and they would spring leaks, and you would tighten those, those ropes down, and it's called suckering the vessel. To undergird it and tighten it so nothing leaks out and nothing gets in that shouldn't be in. And the Holy Spirit was given to strengthen us and guide us so the things of the world don't get in. And we there's too many believers today that have sprung a leak. We, we put in the stuff of God we hear it on Sundays we put it in through the week and it doesn't last because of the storms of life we failed to allow the Holy Spirit to undergird us and tighten us up and it leaks out and we look like the world and we act like the world and we find ourselves not obeying the Word of God we're following our feelings and we're allowing our emotions to rule Not, I'm not preaching against emotions or feelings. God gave you those. But you should control them. They shouldn't control you. Amen. We're talking about obey because he said, if you love me, keep. That word keep literally means to obey my commandments. So, obedience is a hard issue. We needed help. I called my son, Aaron. He was in Paris last week. I said, Aaron, I said, when are you coming down? He said, well, we're, we're thinking we're going to come down this next weekend, this coming up weekend. Because we want you to keep you and mom keep the kids, and we want to go and do some things. I said, "That's fine, I'll do that, but you're gonna cut my bushes." <laughs> I didn't say it that way. I said, "I need you to cut my bushes. They're really getting wild, and I haven't. I used to do it a couple times through the season, uh, and I, I need you to come cut them." And he was like, "Oh, dad, blah, 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 blah." I said, "Listen, your mother." has threatened to get the hedgers and get out there and cut those bushes. And I don't want her cutting the bushes. And he said, Mama don't need to cut those bushes. Now, he, he wouldn't do it for me, but he'll do it for his mama. Now, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> now, they're going to get cut because he's agreed to come cut them because of his mama. I'm like, I'm the one who's suffering here. And you'll do it for mama. You see, we need help. We need to know when to ask for help from God. Lord, help me. You know, we need, uh, now I'm going to say something here, and boy, it's going to scare you. I know it is. Because we need to know when we can ask help from one another. Because the Bible tells us that those who are spiritual among you restore those who have stumbled, who have fallen, who have tripped, who are weaker. Too many times in the church world, 
our brother stumbles and we kick him as we walk by rather than restoring him or her to a place of, of strength and spirituality and, and, and hopefulness. Third point, love is the key. We'll say it again. It's real simple. This is a very simple message. If you want to obey, you've got to love. You can't keep the law out of, out of uh, uh, just a desire. Your will is not strong enough. You can't keep the Word of God. You can't do what Jesus says simply because you want to. You will to. You, you, you won't. You'll fail. Okay? Love has to be involved. Love is the key to obedience. Verse 24, he says, He who does not love me does not keep my words. Now, you can read that as saying, well, if you're not keeping his words, then you don't love him. But that's not the way he said it. He said, if you don't have love, this is the way I'm reading it, if you don't love him, you're not going to be able to keep his word. You see, we turn it around in reverse. So many times when we hear it, when we read it. Well, if I'm not keeping his word, then I don't love him. You can't keep his word if you don't love him. You must first love him in order to keep his word. We're trying to keep the word without having the love so many times. Oh, come on. 1 John 4, 7 through 10 says this, Beloved, let us love one another. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. Okay, don't lie. I love you. For God is love. Or excuse me, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Verse 9, in this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Now, did you hear that? We live through Jesus Christ. That's the intent and purpose of the Jesus life, is to live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. John, 1 John 3 and 18, that was 1 John 4, 7 and through 10. This is 1 John 3 and 18. My little children, let us, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Okay, let us not love in word or in tongue. That's the actions Okay, in, in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, you could say, well, well, deed and truth is actions too, but it, it comes from the depth of heart, of love, okay? We're dealing with heart issues. We're dealing with heart issues. Jesus' life is not about how we are walking our walking is determined by our heart. Jesus put it this way. and it, it, He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart is what's going to come out. Whatever's in your heart is how you're going to walk out life. I had someone say to me one time this. When they were doing things, I'm like, you know, how do you do that? He said, you will make a way to do what you really want to do. Something you really want to do, you'll make a way to do it. Okay? So if it's in here, it's going to come out. Now here's the problem. Can, can, I, can I deal with the problem as I see it? Can I just do that right now? We have an understanding. We know what the Word says. We know what we're supposed to do. We, we can quote it. We can tell you how to do it. We can talk about it. We can give you advice on it. But the problem lies in the disconnect between here and here. David did not, or the psalmist did not write, Thy word have I memorized in my mind that I might not sin against you. 
He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. There was an understanding that it's got to go from here to here. We're, God help me. We're studying for the test and we're failing the test because you'll never pass this test with a head knowledge and without a heart knowledge. This test of living the Jesus life is it's passed and it's lived out with a heart knowledge. Not with, the, not with the soulish mind, not with the carnal mind, not with the understanding of, of I know what I'm supposed to do. The Pharisees and the scribes knew what the law said. They knew what they were supposed to do. They crossed every uh, T and dotted every I of the law, but still failed. And Jesus told them, you're like whited sepulchers. We talked about this last week. Proverbs 4 and 23. Gina quotes this all the time to me. I say she quotes it all the time to me like I need it. She, she, use, she refers to it. But it says, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep your heart, that word keep, there it is again. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life now you understand what i'm saying <clears throat> you see we we read that as if it's saying well all the problems we see issues as problems all the problems that i'm having with in life it, it they spring out you know all the difficulties no <laughs> you see as a believer if you're full of the holy spirit if you're saved sanctified full of the holy ghost jesus talked about something that's going to spring up within us Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm. I'm just now starting to settle into my preach, so hang on. Because if we can ever get this right, translating what we know here to what is here, and it mixes with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in faith, it will change the dynamic of who we are and how we live. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. That word, keep, in Proverbs. Same as the others. To guard, to watch, to keep, preserve. You look at the word diligence in Hebrew. That word diligence really takes on similar meaning to keep. Meaning to man the post. To, to it even speaks of a guard of a prison or to confine. You see, we're, we're to have diligence over our heart. Oh, God, help me. Of what goes in and what goes out. It's not God's job to monitor what goes into your heart and what comes out. That's your job. To guard your heart with, with all diligence. To, 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 to make sure that you are, you are overseeing and protecting your heart. So that it doesn't become bitter. So that it doesn't become hard. So that you don't allow things in of the world that, that can plague you. Now listen, then he talks about the issues of life. That word issues right there deals with going over the border. Crossing borders. Out of it springs issues of life. If, if you leave this country and you go to another country and you cross a border, especially nowadays, 
you, you know, some of them, they won't let you in if you're from the United States because of the, the pandemic that's going on. They've already said there are some states that won't let Texans come. We're, we're facing borders. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There are borders to, to the things that God has placed in you and over you. And if we're going to be what we're supposed to be, Gina, if you'll come to the piano, please. And we've got to guard the borders of our heart. We've got to tend those things and not let the enemy encroach on them with the weeds of life and choke out the living and choke out the, the things of God. You see, we're a Pentecostal church. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to move in us, among us. We believe in, in the supernatural. But when was the last time you saw something supernatural? Oh, man, that hurts. When was the last time you saw a miracle? Let me ask you this. When was the last time you saw somebody saved? A sinner come to Jesus Christ. That's a miracle. We don't see it anymore. Not like, not like we should. And I'm not talking about what used to be. I'm talking about what should be right now. God should be moving in our midst. And not just so we can feel good and feel better. And it's... God help me. It's time for you and I to stop waiting for someone to excite us to a point where we feel good and maybe God will move. As I was finishing this up, I was talking about, we we're talking about keeping His Word. John 14 and 23. See, there's three or four times in John 14 from verse 15 to verse 24 he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Or, if you don't love me, you're not going to keep my word. Now, just prior to this, in verse 12, 13, he says, you can ask anything in my name, and it'll be, it'll be done. We like that verse. We need that verse. It, it, it's part of what we believe. But we don't see it. I'm tired of believing in something that we don't see right here and now. It's not that I don't believe it. I'm talking about the disconnect. Now watch, just, just hold on, because I'm about to give you, you know, this has been hard. You think it's been hard for you, it's been hard for me. But let me tell you something. I'm about to give you a key. Okay? We're about to get a key right here. Because when you look at what Jesus says in John 14 and 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. That word for word, I looked it up. I knew what it was, but I looked it up. In the Strong's Concordance. It's the Greek word, logos. Some say logos, logos. We, we have two descriptions of word in the Greek, and maybe more, but two main ones. One of them is logos, and, and the way we best describe that is, this is a written word, it's, it's just a word. The other one we really like in the Pentecostal charismatic circles, it's the rhema. It's the living word. Oh, it's the word, it's alive. We like that one. But if you look at the definition of this, I found a dual meaning for me. And if you'll just hang on, I hope it takes on a dual meaning for you too. Because the, the definition of the word logos, right here, when Jesus says, if you love me, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. The definition is this. And when I first read it, I didn't have an aha moment. I had a sarcastic moment. 
Because that word right there that Jesus uses is defined as follows. Anything, any word spoken by someone living. And when I read that, I thought, never heard a dead man speak. That's kind of, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, wait a minute, see the spiritual application there. And I got excited sitting in my chair. Because if you read through the four Gospels, you see where Jesus is sitting in the temple or in the synagogue. And he's teaching the people and they're marveling and they're saying, we've never heard any. We've heard these scriptures before, but we've never heard them like this. We've heard this taught before, but we've never heard it like this. Because there was something different that was taking place. Because someone who was actually alive was expounding on the living word of God. And it takes on new meaning. It takes on power. Because someone who's alive is speaking it. I began to think about this. And having some understanding and clarity. That you and I as believers in Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be among the living. We're supposed to be those who have the spirit of life in us. book of Hebrews says the word of God is sharp and powerful than any two-edged sword dividing asunder soul spirit joint and marrow you understand what what the implications you, you you hear what I'm talking about you see we're talking about how the Jesus life and obeying if you want to know how to obey you got to have the word not here but here and the word has to start coming from here, out here, and out here. When we live the word, and we walk the word, and we do the word, and we let the word, then we start living a Jesus life. Jesus told his disciples greater things in John chapter 14. Anyone who believes in me Anyone who hears my words, keeps my commandments. These things that I do, greater things are you going to do. I've heard it preached. I've preached it myself. I've, we've sung about it. Church is a mighty army. Are we not? But we're a mighty army that's sitting doing nothing a lot of times. We're not, we're not, we're not walking out the Jesus life like we ought to be. Hear me. Oh, I... God help me. Lord help me. I'm feeling a run and I, I know I can't. I'm feeling a jump, but I can't. Yeah, I fell yesterday. <laughs> Jesus, uh, Gina, I say that all the time. Gina told me I couldn't move if I couldn't. She got on, I had to do exercises, and I fell. And she said, you're not going to do your exercise. I got to because my balance is off. She was very upset because I fell. This, this is not hard. The Jesus life, it's in you. Like she said earlier during praise and worship, we ju you just have to start letting it out. Letting him out. But you can't let him out. You can't let the Jesus life out if you don't know what it is. It is holy time for you and I as believers in Jesus Christ. Do you believe your life? Take it. Some of you look like you're not sure. 
I'm a little worried about you. I want you to take a deep breath. Go ahead, take it in. Now, let it out. If you can do that, you're alive. Okay? But in the spiritual sense, do you believe you're alive? Have you been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ? Because let me tell you something. If the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your life, you are among the living. And that's enough to rejoice for eternity. That you're among the living. But listen and think. Do you want to know how the Word of God goes from a Logos to a Rhema? It's when the living begin to speak it in faith. Not talking name it, claim it. This is not a prosperity gospel that I'm preaching. I'm talking about the Word of God going forth in the power and the life of the Word of God anointed by the Holy Spirit to bring about the exaltation of Jesus. It's not about more houses and cars and bigger bank accounts. It's not about being able to say, look at me and look at this. It is about saying, look at Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of my faith. Look at Jesus Christ, the healer of my body, soul, and spirit. Look at Jesus Christ, the one who can deliver and save and heal. If it doesn't point to Jesus, it's not real life. Stand with me. I want you to know something. If you would just bow your head, close your eyes. I've been hollering and being loud. It's, it's because I'm excited. I'm excited about what I believe God desires to do for you in you, and through you. But only you can fix that disconnect of having a head knowledge and moving in a heart lifestyle. I can't fix it for you. I know a lot of times we leave out and we think, well, the preacher was was really getting on us. He stepped on our toes. He scolded us. That's not what this is. That's not my intent. I really, for me, this is a word of encouragement. Because God wouldn't have sent it to us this morning if He didn't have something greater for us today. I really believe that. I don't believe the church is going out powerless. And I don't believe we're just going to keep looking back the way things used to be, some of us, and the great move of God that that have been in history I believe the greatest move of God is before us I believe the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit stands before us I believe it's going to happen right it's going to be preceding the rapture of the church and I believe we're in that moment I with all of my heart and being I would get out of what I'm doing if I didn't believe that so desperately now more than ever it's a time For those to arise with the clarion call of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To walk the Jesus life among those who are dead in their sin. And display the love of Jesus Christ for the world. Father God, in the name of Jesus... Lord, to those who are under the sound of my voice, both here, listening, watching by distance. God, I pray, Lord, that we would follow and obey your word. 
follow the path you lay us lay before us and to hear your words and to do your word not to just to be hearers but to be doers of your word to live out a life god in grace and in truth a life of faith and holiness unto you lord for those moments that we stumble for those moments that we don't accomplish your will in our life, for our life. God, we help us to arise as you've sent the helper to get up and to gird us, to continue to move forward, to live out the Jesus life. Father, we love you and we praise you and we magnify your name. Would you just lift your hands to him? Would you just call out to him right now? Would you just ask him to guide and direct you? To hear and then to do what he's speaking to you today and tomorrow and throughout this week. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you being a part of our service. I want to remind you our Wednesday nights are online. Thursdays are young adults and youth are, are on Zoom. Our children's ministries um, is currently they've been putting up videos and they have packets. That's supposed to start back on Sunday morning. Just our Kingdom Kids Church on the 9th. We're excited about trying to move into a little, more of, a little bit more of our normalcy. And uh, so um, be here next Sunday, 930, for our d adult discipleship with Bill and Denise Crumpton. And then morning worship at 1030. I'm going to let these two sections go. For